How's it going YouTube? I was just out and I thought I'd do a, a video on the van and a bit of an update because it was been it's been three years now since I finished the conversion. I thought we'd go through a few things and have a look around the van and see what's changed. See if there's anything I'd have done different. See if I've learnt anything. Here we are looking outside, it's obviously changed a bit outside now, hasn't it? Let's have a quick look around the outside and see what sort of things have changed since I did that look around video. The obvious thing is the graphics on it. There is a reason why I fitted those. Obviously when you're painting a van, you get what you pay for. I painted this myself. I'm not a painter, so I got what I paid for. I had a few problems with some rust down on this arch here, mainly because I didn't prep it properly, so rather than painting the whole van again i just re i sanded it down repaired the rust covered it over with some graphics i think it looks quite good actually anyway it was the same on this side there was some rust, co rust coming through the arches there there's still some at the bottom of the doors i need to sort out so one of the other issues was because i didn't paint it in a proper spray booth the lacquer was a bit thin so it weren't as thick and shiny as what it should have been so these graphics kind of break it up a little bit. Let's go through mechanically what's happened in the last three years, because obviously this is a Volkswagen Transporter and everybody knows they're a money pit. I don't know if you guys can see there properly, but we've done 238,000. I can't remember what it was on when I did the walk around. So obviously at this mileage, we can expect an issue or two. First major problem I had was the gearbox seized up. Uh, it started making a bit of a whining noise in fifth and then one day after a trip around scotland i got back i was literally just down the road and everything just locked up i fitted a reconditioned gearbox while i was doing it i changed the clutch and the flywheel and i also had a one of the drive shafts was worn as well because these are known for it so all i did is i changed both of those and there were some mounts and other things that i changed at the same time so it weren't particularly a cheap repair but doing it myself save quite a bit of money but that was one of the first major issues together with that the very nice tow man managed to smash up my front skirt that i've not got around to fixing yet a year after that on a trip to cornwall the engine started overheating it started boiling the water so after limping through the holiday keep topping the water up and then it overheating it turned out the water was being pressurized i've got a bit of a video on my channel that i put on for changing the head it turned out the head warped. But one of the things I did do was I had the van mapped. And so I don't know whether it warped because the van was mapped, but I'd still map it again anyway because it made such a difference. Right, so mechanically, we've had the gearbox, a few bits around there, the engine. And apart from that, it's your usual wear and tear bits, your brake pads and all that sort of stuff, and a few bushes here and there. But on the whole, apart from the engine it's been quite good i would expect that because of the miles it's done anyway so i can't hold that against it right one of the changes i've done on here is i've taken the bike rack off the back because i found that i never really used it and i started getting into walking a lot more than i did biking so my bike's gone and that's been changed out so because of that the bike rack's gone it has left me with some gaps in the spoiler which i do need to take the spoiler off and change that at some point i'll get that changed over i've got a bit of a broken skirt there as well because i keep reversing into things especially when i'm on dodgy places like up the lake district and places like that but i really need to take the whole thing off and change the bumper for a new one and not put those skirts on as a result of being on the tow truck a few times from breaking down i've lifted the suspension up because that was causing me a few issues so it's still low but it's nowhere near as low as what it was. So I can actually get on tow trucks all right now. Another obvious addition is the awning down the side, the Fiamma F45. Uh, that suits my style of camping great, 
because what I like to do is I like to do a bit of wild camping and just dump it anywhere rather than the campsite camping. So I don't want to be setting up a big full awning. If I go onto the near a beach or something like that, it's nice just to wind that out and it takes two minutes. And then if I want to go, I can wind it back in. So the van itself has been quite good. There's no other changes on the outside, just what we've spoke about and that's about it. Nothing else has really gone wrong. I'm still tempted to put a facelift front end on it because they do look nice with those posh headlights and everything. It's far from perfect, but I'm happy with it. I won't want to change anything. One thing I did forget to mention is I did a video on changing the driver's side lock because that started playing up a bit. The passenger side one's playing up a bit now, that's not unlocking. Sometimes it unlocks, sometimes it doesn't, it's a bit random. I need to do it actually before it deadlocks forever. Right, in the front end obviously we've got the seats that we got from George at Captain Seats. They still look like brand new, they are absolutely gorgeous, really comfortable. Another change I made in here was I toned down this colour a bit, because it was orange weren't it? So I've, I've toned it down to like a bit of a burgundy colour, it's the same colour as my MR2. I've now also taken the TomTom -tom out of there and I've got a Pioneer Apple CarPlay thing. So all my sat nav and everything is done off of that. It actually irritates me to death most of the time because it's always resetting and stopping and things like that, it's bloody terrible. Right, let's have a look inside shall we and see if there's been any changes or anything I would have done different in there. Right, first thing, let me get this table out of the way and I'll put it back on the back door so we can actually move around inside. Probably be easier using two hands for this, wouldn't it? Done. Right, whilst I'm at the back, Let's have a look at this, shall we? I wanted to create a bit of room in here. As you can see now, it's virtually empty. Well, these are in here, but they're empty, look. So I need to move those somewhere else. What I wanted to do was make a bit of space in here for all my hiking and camping gear because I'm getting into a bit of wild camping as well. So I like to hike up mountains, stay in a tent on the top of a mountain for the night or camp in the camper, it's my choice. So I might start doing a few videos on that as well, I don't know yet. But the main thing was, I wanted to create some room in there for all that gear. So I got this off of Amazon, this like stretchy net thing. It's got a little mounting point there that I had to screw in. One down there, one there, and one there. And all my bedding can literally fit in there. And it's all held in, doesn't go anywhere. Because this space has just sat doing nothing anyway and the only time you actually want to use that space is when you pull the seats down to make a bed and then all this will go over there and it's a lot easier to get to it actually also means whilst everything's shut up like this i could make the bed from the inside i'll literally just pull the bed out and then everything's there and i don't even have to get out of the van to make the bed whereas before i had to come round the back open this up take my bedding out make the bed, close that up, and if it's cold at night, it's not very nice. Here we've got the handle for the awning. That's just clipped onto the side. So this change, I'm quite impressed with that, and it was only a few quid, so I bought myself a spare one, just in case that one breaks as well. So I've got another one in the drawer ready. Quite hard shutting the tailgate now, actually, because I, I changed those gas rams for the uprated ones for the bike rack. Now I've taken the bike rack off, it's quite heavy to push down. Right, inside I made quite a big change to this layout here. Because this seat belt, uh, this one's broken, I need a new one, that won't retract anymore. But these ones, what they did is they mounted underneath to a bar that goes across, they went up, over and back down at the end to the bar. So what was happening, when I was pulling that, this bit was coming forwards, I had to pull that to feed it through as I was pulling. So I've changed the design of that now and what I've done is the front portion, I've mounted it here to the underneath. I've welded some little plates in and mounted it there. So as that pulls out, everything comes out together 
the length stays the same and it all folds down nicely so there's no messing about now as you can see the bedding's there waiting to be made yeah, so that made putting the bed down a lot easier another change i've recently done is i had usb sockets there because i've seen a lot of vans having usb sockets there that's actually a terrible idea because when your bed's down your feet are down here you've got your cover and everything on your usb plugs are sticking out of there i snapped those off a few times in the night kicking them with my legs so what i did is i've taken that out and replaced that with a 12 volt socket for my uh, macbook which we did on a video uh, the other week and the usb sockets i've just moved up to the top so i just leave them plugged in there leave my phone on the side overnight that's where i leave things to charge that's much better i've taken the tv off the bracket i've actually stuffed it down there it keeps falling out when i go around corners sometimes so i need a little bit of elastic or something going around there just to retain it back i don't think i'll ever use that to be honest i've never used it here you don't go away to watch telly do you if you want to watch telly you might as well do that at home i can't remember if i had the planar heater or not when i did the video but this is absolutely fantastic this for for winter you just literally set your temperature and off it goes and it just maintains that temperature it's great i couldn't do without that one thing i did have to do because i'm a bit stupid is these hinges are absolutely terrible so the ones where it fastens into the door they weren't deep enough so i had to get some really long size four screws so they go right into the door because i literally i had every one of these doors falling off so that was one of the things i had to repair uh, the roof i had to repair a few times because i did have like, as you can see the little press things behind there so and i was trying to get them out of the way so you couldn't really see them that worked out to be a horrible idea and they all kept falling down so I've just used these little capped screws there and I've, I've gone across all the roof and I've screwed it all on and used, used the little cap screws so they kind of blend in okay. Apart from that, I've not really changed anything inside. Well, let's have a look at a few things I would do different if I was building the van again. Right, this double swivel here, I got that off of eBay. That is not as good as one of some of the better make well-known ones you can get. I can't remember the name of the place where you get them from, but there is some that are a lot better quality. Not the eBay ones. These are ones that some guy's just knocked up and then he's selling them out on eBay. What the issue is, is when the seat swivels, it doesn't take into account the change of angle. What the good ones are, is they're wedge-shaped. Instead of being parallel turning, they're on a wedge. So it takes into account the change in angle between facing that way and facing this way. What happens with this one being just normal parallel is when it's swiveled and it's facing this way, the front of the seat is angled down like that. So it's literally throwing you off the seat all the time. It's terrible. It needs to be angled back. So it needs wedged up at this side or wedged up at that side. So when it turns around, it's wedged up at this side. So the seat's always facing back, where, whichever way around it is. I will at some point probably change that because I think they're a few hundred pounds for those. I can't remember the name of the good one. Comment below if you know the name of that one, but I can't, cause I can't remember which one it is. So just put a comment below and let everybody know, help them out. I would not change that fridge. That is absolutely fantastic. Super expensive, but it's great. One of the things I would do different, these units have turned out really well. And one of the differences that I've noticed between this van and a lot of other vans that I see is this looks like all these units are supposed to be in the van there i scribed them all in everywhere all around here all into this corner down there everything's scribed in properly so it looks like it's part of the van a lot of vans that i do see it looks like somebody's got some boxes of units and just left them in the back of their van and forgot about them they look terrible but one thing i would do different is i would find some units that are good and I wouldn't make them myself next time I'd buy ready-made units because my cutting on a chop saw is not going to be as good as a CNC machine so some of my lines aren't perfectly straight whereas a CNC machine will be cut out perfect the other thing is making these units myself like this out of out of the lightweight ply lightweight ply itself is quite expensive but making them myself like this it didn't work out much cheaper than what I could have got a nice set of units for and it's a lot less work having them already done for you you literally just screw them together and then you're done 
I would definitely recommend the units that's got the board across there because I think that one of the things that makes everything look fitted rather than just a seat floating around in the middle of nowhere let me move that cover so you can see there you are right. i do think that makes all the seating and the bed look a bit a lot more fitted than what it would be rather than just units there and a bed there just sat there in the middle of nowhere i use that one for storage for like my boots and things like it's got a subwoofer over at that half but this half it's got all my boots and things like that and uh, sandals for the beach and all that sort of stuff right, something else i would definitely do different is those cupboards there i'd have a plinth going across the bottom before the doors i don't know what possessed me to make the doors like that but when you open them they're kind of a bit just clearing the floor some sometimes well there was scraping before i did the the hinges now they're literally just clearing the floor what i did want to do was i wanted to get one of those nice fitted carpets so sometimes i could have a carpet sometimes i could take it out and leave it like this i'd like that choice but i haven't got that choice because i've got those type of doors so i would definitely i have actually got some of this ply left so i need to get some more knock on edging and what i will do is i'll cut the doors short and then i'll put a plinth across the bottom and i'll bring those up a bit and change that i think right one thing that i'm kind of still in two minds about is a pop top it's a lot of money to have a pop top fitted for the style of camping that i do i'd rather be a bit more stealthy than have a great big top just popped up in the air so everybody can see i'm camping i tend to be a bit more stealthy than that but believe me getting dressed like this bent over is no fun at all neither is stood here like this making some meals what i find is most of the time i'll kneel down on the floor and then i'll make it something like that i'm normally making like a little wrap or something so i'm i'm not making no big three course meal but saying that the pop top would give me that extra room so you can stand up when you need to stand up but it's an expensive item just to stand up so i'm still kind of on the fence a little bit about that i think if i was doing the camper again i would definitely do the pop top just for resale value if anything and apart from that i don't think there's anything really that i'd do any different i absolutely love this van i wouldn't want to get rid of it the only reason i'd get rid of it is to build another one and do one a little bit newer uh, but apart from that i've got no reason at all to change anything else in this van i've used it a lot i've been everywhere in it and i'm happy with everything that it is all right so i don't know if there's any information in there that help anybody out but that's my experience of the last three years owning this van i'm hoping to start doing some more videos again soon on this and the mr2 and some other bits and bobs i might start doing some of the wild camping videos as well just generally going out for a, a night out in the van we'll go and see where i'm going and what i'm doing and how i do it and i might do ones where randomly we'll just nip off hike up to the top of a mountain and then we'll camp up there for the night as well so I, i'm quite interested in doing a few of those just to share that experience rather than just me doing it i might as well do a video on it and we'll see if anybody likes that as well so don't forget to subscribe if you've not subscribed already like the video because that helps a ton i know i've not done a lot of videos lately but hopefully we'll be getting some done again soon so i'm, I'm getting the motivation and i'll catch you guys later cheers